Welcome to Oster Professional. My name is David Green, Global Artistic Director. I'm going to talk to you today about the most awesome, most powerful tool in the clipper business. It's called the Titan Clipper. The Titan Clipper has a universal motor inside it. It's an armature motor. What that means is that it continually turns the drive tip and nothing in its path can stop the blade from moving. Thick hair, coarse hair, taking a lot of hair off at one time, you're going to want to go to the Titan Clipper. It has two speeds to it, a high and a low speed. Toggle switch on the bottom, high speed, low speed, whichever you want to use. I use the low speed when I'm working on thin, fine hair or I'm not taking a lot of hair at one time. I'll use the low speed. When I'm going through a lot of hair, removing a lot of volume or thick hair, I kick it onto the high speed. It's going to come with two blades. It's going to come with a number one blade and it's also going to come with a three zero blade. These are the two widely most used blades when doing clipper work and clipper over comb work. To change the blades, it is a detachable system. You simply push on the blade, lift it out, set it down, grab your other blade. There's a slot on the bottom of the blade, right in through here. That little slot slides into the peg, which is right here, on the hinge assembly. When you snap it on, I recommend that you turn the blade on. Turn it on, snap it down in place, turn it off. It's not important to have it running when you take it off, but I really recommend that you have it running when you put it on, for the simple reason that the lever, which is right here, will never stop in the same place twice. It will always stop somewhere different. If it is not properly lined up with the slot, which is right here on the moving blade, then when it goes in, it's going to fall in very hard. If you do that consistently, then you may round out the tips of the lever right in through here. Once that happens, your blade, when you're using it, will have a very, very slight wobble. Anytime there's movement in the outside portion of the blade, it's going to affect the way the blade cuts. Two blades to it, two speeds. There are a detachable blade system to it, and there are additional blades that you may purchase at any Oster distributor to snap onto this. When you want power, you want torque, you want to do a lot of work, a lot of barber work, a lot of fading, and a lot of hair removal, you're going to want to go to the Titan Clipper. It has no limits. The Titan from Oster Professional. Let's talk a little bit about the maintenance of this as maintenance is key to the longevity of your tool. Maintenance in the Titan is critical to the life of the product. If you take care of this tool, you will get years and years of life out of it. Keep a cleaning brush handy so that you can keep your blades clean. Always clean the underneath blades as well as the top. Snap your blades off as the Titan has a detachable blade system. Keep the blades clean underneath. I always push the blades off to one side, brush underneath it, push it off to the other side, and brush the other side out as well. Keep the entire hinge assembly hair free and clean as well. Brush this out regularly. Wash your blades. It's very important to wash these blades. I recommend washing all your blades on any tools at least once a week. To do that, have your blade on, get yourself Blade Wash by Oster Professional. Pour a little bit of it into a clear bowl, grab your tool, turn the Titan on and totally submerge the blade into the product. Let it run for approximately 10 seconds and get all that ground up hair, all that product that dried on the blade off. Wipe off the excess with a towel and it's good and clean. Instantly, grab blade lube and oil the blade. I put a drop on each side, one in the middle, one on the other side, turn the tool on sideways and let it disperse that oil. Grab your spray disinfectant and immediately spray the underneath side as well as the top side. This should be done every time the blade comes in contact with another client, you should disinfect it. Every time I pick up a blade to use it, I will blade lube it and oil it as well. There is a little silver button right here on the side of the Titan. 
That is actually a ball bearing. That ball bearing needs to be pushed in with your fingertip, turn the tool on and put a drop of oil on it and it will suck the oil right down into the drive mechanism that is sealed inside the housing. The only way to oil that is by putting a drop of oil in that and I recommend doing that at least once a month. If you think about it, do it. If you let that dry out completely, the tool may get hot in your hands very quickly right in this area. If that happens, that's telling me I need to oil this. There are two vents on the bottom of the Titan. They're much like a hair dryer vent, one on each side. Keep these vents hair free, lint free, dirt free. This tool needs to suck air in from the bottom of the tool. It goes through the cavity, through the motor, and vents out on the sides. That keeps it cool and smooth running. If these plug up, then it's going to struggle to get air, it's going to slow it down, and it's going to get hot quickly. Brush these out or run them under hot water, dry them off, and snap them back in place. Periodically, you're going to need to replace the carbon brushes that are inside this piece. These side buttons right here are actually not a button. A lot of people think they are an adjustment screw. They are not. There's carbon brushes under them and they're a cap. Just simply grab a dime, use that dime to unscrew this cap. When you take this cap off, you're going to see another cap underneath here that holds the carbon brush. It's right here. Now let me show you when the carbon brushes are both in good shape and working well, the tool comes on. When the carbon brushes wear down and do not, then you'll see what happens is the tool will actually stop running. As I pull this out and now I turn it on, since that carbon brush is gone, there's no contact, the tool won't work. You will notice when the carbon brushes will need to be replaced as the tool will cut on and off like it has a short when you're using it. If that happens, your brushes are wearing down. If you don't replace them, there will be a day when it's plugged into the wall, you'll flip the switch and it won't come on. Now they're wore down beyond and you need to replace them. When you replace one, you replace both. Simply take it out, grab your new one, pick it up, and you will notice on the brushes that there is a slight concave at the end of that brush. That concave follows the same pattern as the housing of the clipper. That's the shape of the motor inside. Get that little brush, slip it into place, grab your cap, put the two pieces to the cap on top, and snap it into place. Put your thumb over it so that the spring doesn't push the cap off if you didn't lock it in place. Grab the outside cap, drop it on there, get your dime, come in through here, screw it down. When you replace one, replace both. Now that we've got it back in, let's see what happens when we turn it on. It's good to go. Very simple, very easy to do. The carbon brushes are available at every Oster distributor. They come sold in a set. It's an inexpensive way to keep your tool running. A lot of tools are sent into Oster Service Center. Most of the time these tools come in and the only thing wrong with them is they needed new carbon brushes. If you don't want to be without your tool, pick up a couple of set of brushes, keep them in your tool cabinet and keep them handy. Twice a year, you're going to remove this face plate. Let's take this blade off, set this down, get a Phillips screwdriver, come in here and remove the face plate. There is the drive mechanism for the lever that moves the blade is underneath this face plate. We are going to need to replace that with new gear loop, and we want to do that at least twice a year. The way I remember to do that is every time I change my clocks forward and back, it tells me I got to replace this gear loop. Those of you that live in Arizona, Hawaii, other places around the country that don't change a clock back, you're going to have to figure out a way to remember it. Either write it on a calendar or think of birthdays, Christmas, holidays, that kind of thing, and get it in your mind to switch it out. Take the faceplate off. As soon as I take the faceplate off, I'm going to wipe it clean. 
set it down. Now, as I show you underneath the faceplate, this is the drive mechanism for the lever that moves the blades. As I turn this on, you'll see the movement that happens in through there. Right in through here, in the gears, is where the grease needs to be put in. The new gear lead needs to go in here. There's a little hole right under here, we'll take that out, where you'll stick the tip of the gear lube right into there and squeeze in new lube. Two ways you can do this. You can either use a cotton swab and go inside here and just clean it out around it and replace the new gear lube. In this side of the tool, this is just an empty cavity. We don't put gear lube in there. It will catch gear lube as it's running and throw it in through there. I just clean that out as well. If you are mechanically inclined, you can take this apart. If you take it apart, set it down in the way you take it out so you know exactly how it goes back in. Use just a regular screwdriver, come in under the lever and pop this out. As we take this out, let's wipe it clean. Set it off to the side. Now, we'll pull this cover off, lift this out, wipe it clean as well. And I'll just wipe off the excess grease around that. It doesn't have to be spotless, but let's get a lot of that old grease off of there. Set it down, and now let's take the gears out, which is right here. And here's what the gears look like. I'll just roll that, get some of that old grease off of there, and set it down. Now, use your cotton swab and come in here and let's just pull out all that old grease out of that cavity. Once you get that out, put your gear back in place, just drop it in, grab the cover, drop it on. Now, grab your lever and there's two holes on it. The bigger hole will line up with the large peg, the little hole lines up with the small peg. Drop it in place, push it all the way down. At this point, grab your gear lube and I'll put lube right around the gears down around the bottom. This little hole on the top, I'll insert it right here and squeeze it until I see it come out through the sides right underneath. Grab your faceplate, set it in place, and screw it back down. If you don't keep this lube changed out at least a couple of times a year, what can happen is from heat and cooling as the tool runs, the lube will actually turn into more of a paste. Once that happens, then all the gears are going to struggle to run freely. Replace it, and you won't have any issues with that. Use your towel and wipe off any excess lube on the outside. Now it's good to go for another half a year. Again, do this at least twice a year. Turn it on, snap on a blade. You can hear that she's running beautifully. Maintenance on the Titan is critical to the life. This is not a tool you want to replace every year. This is a tool that you will get years and years of life of out of your career. Take care of the Titan Clipper, and the Titan Clipper is going to take care of you. From Oster Professional, we want to thank you.